In this episode of Linux News Log, IBM and Canonical push into African netbooks, Red Hat asks the Supreme Court to nix software patents, and how to install DDWRT on a PC in Linux. QuickSurf Internet Media presents Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Phoenix, Arizona, here in Studio BR2 at QuickSurf Internet Media. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to www.techpodcast.com. If you like my show, then you'll certainly find other technology-related shows over there that you'll like as well. Let's go ahead and get into the news for episode number 185. The first story that we have is from Channel Register, and it's entitled Canonical and IBM Push into African Netbooks. And uh, essentially, uh, IBM and Canonical are budding up to sell a new business application bundle combining Ubuntu and Lotus, Lotus for small, cheap computers in Africa. Under the pact, IBM is tying together various Lotus client applications running on top of the open source operating system for the country's lower end devices like netbooks, thin clients, and even mobile phones. Big Blue announced the offering on Wednesday at LinuxCon in Portland, Oregon. So uh, we'll definitely be keeping an eye on this. Um, something uh, tells me that uh, this could be a big hit there. I, again, it's I'm not really sure one way or the other because the one laptop per child was supposed to try to do this and they've uh, been failing it miserably thus far. Let's talk about our sponsor for this episode, GoToAssist Express. I want to tell you about a way to save time and money and make you look like a hero to clients or colleagues. GoToAssist Express, easy and secure remote support solution, purpose built for small businesses and professionals who need to support clients. One of the best things about GoToAssist is that you don't have to pre install software on your customers' machines, so you can instantly start supporting them online. Plus, with GoToAssist Express unattended support with your customer's permission, you can even support customers when they are away from their computer. I want you to try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash techpodcast. That's gotoassist.com slash techpodcast. Okay, the uh, next story that we have is from Information Week and their government section, and it's entitled, Red Hat Asks the Supreme Court to Nix Software Patents. What? Software patents? Yeah. Uh, Red Hat has filed a friend of the court brief with the U.S. Supreme Court asking it to uphold a lower court's ruling that software isn't patentable. Red Hat is not a direct party, but took a position against software patents in the case of Bernard Belinsky and Rand Warsaw versus David Kapos, Undersecretary of Commerce and Director of the U.S. Patent Office. The case is now before the Supreme Court. Rob Tiller, an assistant general counsel at Red Hat, filed the brief in what he said was a rare chance to attack the patent issue head on. You know, <clears throat> um, I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, the patent system has been in place for a while. Software patents, it, I mean, yeah, you're not patenting a physical thing or, or whatever. You're, you're patenting a, a specific way of doing something or an algorithm, and I don't think that you can do that. But at the same time, uh, I, I just I don't think the patent system is going to go away, at least not for software anytime soon. So it's unfortunate, but you know, reality. From PC World and their business center, Cloudera introduces Hadoop management tools. Um, this is kind of interesting. Cloudera is a startup. They're introducing a set of applications for working with Hadoop, the open source framework for large scale data processing and analysis. Uh, they provide Hadoop support to enterprises. They developed a new browser based application suite to simplify the process of using Hadoop. And um, they're releasing it. Kind of cool. So if you're a Hadoop user, by all means, definitely go check them out. Um, 
might be something you could use potentially for sure. From Desktop Linux, OpenSUSE 11.3 is poised for release. Um, I've been kind of watching the whole OpenSUSE thing and uh, what, he, what they have here is they've released the last milestone of OpenSUSE Linux before the final release in November. 11.2 milestone 8 features numerous bug fixes, Linux kernel 2.6.31, improved partitioning, social networking clients, and new versions of packages including GNOME 2.28 and um, they're getting ready to release it. So uh, definitely check it out if you're an OpenSUSE user, by all means. From uh, Syscon Media in their Linux section, the Linux Foundation announces a second annual End User Summit. Um, here they've got, uh, they've announced a speaker lineup and details for its second annual End Second annual end user summit. The summit is a unique opportunity for corporate end users to learn and interact with leaders from within the Linux community, including the highest level maintainers and developers. Um, the summit in question is going to take place November 9th through 10th at the Hyatt, New Jersey on the Hudson and will provide end users and kernel developers a direct connection to one another for advancing the features most critical to using Linux in the enterprise. So uh, unfortunately, I can't make this uh, particular one. Um, <clears throat> budget just won't allow it. <laughs> I've got other stuff going on and I, I, I just cannot afford to make that one fly over to the other side of the country. It would be awesome if I could, but I can't. All right, our how-to article for this episode comes from Wi-Fi Planet, and it's entitled How to Install DD-WRT on a PC in Linux. And uh, he starts off saying, Last month we described how to install the wireless firmware, router firmware DD-WRT on a regular PC. The x86 port would give you the ability to run the replacement firmware on systems other than router boards running a meager 16 megs of RAM and a sluggish CPU. Plus, you don't have to track down a supported router. You can use one of your old PCs that are gathering dust. So uh, this is kind of cool. The uh, DDWRT router replacement firmware, there's a lot of uh, Linksys routers out there that uh, you can replace the firmware with with this firmware. And um, there's an x86 port out there that allows you to take this and load it onto a PC. And that's what this tutorial um, walks you through doing. And um, that way you can repurpose an older PC, maybe throw in, you know, a couple of network cards if you want to have multiple connections or something like that. And uh, it lets you uh, replace, uh, or I'm sorry, repurpose an older PC. So really interesting. Um, I would like to try this, or if someone out there is has done this, I really want to know uh, how it's how it's put together because I've got a friend who's been having some wireless router problems and doesn't necessarily need a wireless router but uh, does need a router itself so uh, I'm curious to see how well this works I might end up doing this for uh, one of my friends so anyway um, that's pretty much it for this edition of Linux News Log as always everything I've talked about is linked up in the show notes at linux.quicksurf <clears throat> excuse me linux.quicksurf.com uh, definitely uh, check us out on the website and um, if you want to follow me on twitter twitter.com slash adrian underscore bacon I have all that plus tons of other stuff linked up in the show notes uh, for how to uh, follow me on the web and I will see all of you on the next episode thanks for watching and listening and I'll see you then bye <laughs>